The East Ham Historical Society welcomes you to the Dill Beach Camp. Located at the Swift Daily Complex, right next to the East Ham Post Office, this little shack tells a compelling story of East Ham's relationship to its neighbor to the east, the Atlantic Ocean, especially the complex relationship between the sea and the shore on the great outer beach. In 2006, the province town banner described the camp as one of the last remnants of the era of the outermost house, when beach shacks still dotted the sand spit south of Coast Guard Beach. This short video, narrated by Mo Andujar, curator of the Swift Daily House and Dill Beach Camp, invites you to return to that era for a glimpse into life on the beach. The beach camp, one of nine on this fragile spit of land, was built by Herman Dill in 1935 for use as a gunning camp for duck hunting. It started out as a 12 by 16 foot single room that was later expanded to 16 by 20 feet, perhaps to accommodate the increasing number of summer visitors, some who returned year after year to live a simple life in the dunes, at least for a few weeks each summer. The Bustard Sisters Judy and Nancy and their parents were regular visitors from the late 40s through 1959. Recently, Judy and Nancy visited the beach camp and reminisced about summers spent at the camp. While on vacation, the sisters often walked down the beach to the outermost house. They said that Henry Beston would be there all the time. Not only did they rent the shack, but also the Green Demon. Tommy Dill, the owner's son, let renters use the Dill's Green Demon to get to and from the camp. Oh, we love the picture of the two of you on the back of the truck there. <laughs> Yeah, and funny. is is it correct that's how you got out to the beach oh. camp? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was on the back of the green. Yeah, we park our Chevy right there in the parking lot. You know, no stickers or anything needed, and just took the green demon out. And Tommy would be the driver? <laughs> no. Yes. My mother no, would. it was there. Oh, that I came came with the cottage. for you to use. Yeah, that was for oh, us. Yeah, that came to. with the cottage. Yeah, yeah, because we would come and go. And um, you'd leave the green demon in front of the camp yep. and yeah. then come back when you needed to. Oh, yeah, that was convenient. No, we would park it up, up right off the parking lot. It seems that every visitor to the shack, vacationers and locals alike, wanted to leave their calling cards and signatures of former visitors can still be seen on the inside door casing. The shack has a single door and windows on all four sides, one in the entryway, two in the kitchen area, and three in the main room. It also has a small roof deck reached by a ladder or rope ladders that are stored inside. An interesting note, the windows that used to face east and the ocean side now face west towards the bay side. Some of the glass panes have been replaced, but some are the originals, scoured to a foggy hue by years and years worth of wind blown sand. Even these original wooden shutters couldn't protect them. The shack may have been situated on a remote sand dune, but it was not without its conveniences, including a flush toilet in a small bathroom with a sink.
The sisters explain. In the bathroom on the wall facing the toilet, Tommy had put some faces around the knotty pine holes and you know, so we would sit there and look at that. And then every time you flush the toilet, you had to come out and pump a hundred pumps yep. to fill the tank up. That's again. what I had to do. I've added that to my tour now that since you mm -hmm. explained that process to me. Oh, yeah. The kitchen area was also fully equipped with a pump in the kitchen sink, a refrigerator and a stove which ran on propane, an iron, built-in shelves, and kerosene lamps. The main room was living room, dining room, and bedroom all in one. The Provincetown Banner article describes it rockers, rickety leg chairs, and an old wooden table sit beside a bunk bed made of yellow pine. There is a mantelpiece strewn with beachcombers booty like old bottles and clamshells, and handsome duck decoys decorate the nooks and crannies between the rafters. There is even a duck hunting boat on display, where a smaller bunk for children used to back up against the bathroom wall. There used to be a fireplace and stone chimney at the shack, but it was taken down when the shack was moved. All that remains is the mantle. In February of 1978, what locals call a hurricane blizzard destroyed the beach camps on the spit, including Henry Beston's forecastle, which was the farther south of the camps. These photos tell the story. The Dill Beach Camp was the only survivor. In 1980, Tommy Dill had the camp taken off the beach, put on a flatbed, and moved around to the marsh side of the inlet where it stayed until 1995, when Don Sparrow, then president of the East Ham Historical Society, convinced Tommy to move it to the Swift Daily Complex. What a job that was. Here are some photos. Three members of the Historical Society played key roles in the move across the highway at 6 a.m. on a warm autumn day. Phil Ryder, Tom Lennox, and Chester Ranlett. Today, the beach camp is recognized on the National Register of Historic Places, and it is also a favorite place of families when they visit the Swift Daily Complex. If they are very lucky, Tommy might be here, reminiscing and telling tales of the four decades of summers spent with fishermen, duck hunters, beach walkers, and visitors at his family's camp on the outer beach. In June 2015, Cape Cod historian and writer Don Wilding wrote in the Cape Codder that the East Ham beach camps have become forgotten relics of a bygone era. All but one. The Dill Beach Camp allows us to recall that bygone era, now safely tucked away in the confines of the East Ham Historical Society's Swift Daily House Complex. All photos and narrative information are from the archives of the East Ham Historical Society or the private files of Marka Daly. We hope you enjoyed this short story of the beach camp and thank you
for joining us.